Okay, so for the past like week and a half, I've been doing an experiment with my Raspberry Pi. It's a very specific experiment, it doesn't have a real world purpose, it's just an experiment that has gone terribly, terribly wrong from a result of what I feel is misinformation on the internet. So I'm here to try to help others avoid the mistakes that I've been making. So I start off with a simple goal. I want to Netflix and chill with my Raspberry Pi. I want to run Netflix on Raspberry Pi after reading things about how Netflix support had improved on Linux. And everyone's favorite thing to say about the Raspberry Pi is that it's a mini Linux computer. And sure, let's, let's see if it'll run Netflix then. So I tried three different methods to try to get Netflix to play on the Raspberry Pi. The first was installing Firefox version 50 because it is with Firefox version 50 and it finally supports DRM playback. What is that? Basically, to avoid all the jargon, just give you a nice smooth like butter overview of what that is, it's basically copyright. It's copyrighted media. And Firefox version 50 on Linux finally lifts the ban that previously had been in Firefox when you went to playback copyrighted media that wouldn't play, it lifts that. Now, first of all, installing Firefox, actual Firefox, not um, Snow Weasel, is that what it's called? The native version of Firefox that runs within Raspbian is not actual Firefox. So I had to download actual Firefox, which was a struggle in itself. If people are interested in a step-by-step -step guide on how to do that, I'd be happy to because I'd hate to think someone else would be wasting that much time when you can't achieve it properly. So I get Firefox on there and then I follow the various steps. All of these guides I followed, I'll link down below, but just don't expect much, but I'll link them just so you have them. So I tried all the things, I did all the things, Moral of the story is, it didn't work. You're basically putting up this um, thing to hide the fact that you're on Linux and it's just, it didn't work. It didn't work. And also with um, Firefox on Raspbian, I had issues with uh, YouTube playback as well. So that's not great. So my next task was installing Chrome, Google Chrome onto Raspbian, which uh, just to clarify also, Raspbian is Linux Debian, or are you doing Jesse on Raspberry Pi? So I tried Google Chrome. First of all, installing actual Chrome and not Chromium on the Raspberry Pi is also a difficult task, which if anyone wants a full walkthrough on how to do that, be happy to help with that. So we get that on there. We follow the various steps. We try to enable and disable all the things it says, and you do all the things and no dice. And that's when I started to discover, which then led me down a rabbit hole that made everything make a lot more sense. Um, there is a plugin in Google Chrome that uh, basically enables all the DRM playback and everything like that. It allows you to basically get permission from the source that you're trying to play from to play the media. And it's kind of, think of it like having the key to unlock a very specific door. Now, for some reason on my Raspberry Pi, I was noticing that these certain settings were not showing up to either enable or disable. And I thought that was kind of weird. So I'm just basically kind of standing outside this door, looking for a key that everyone says is supposed to be there, but is not there. Where is it? Well, it turns out that, and maybe this is old news, maybe I'm behind, but for those that don't know, here it is. The Raspberry Pi is using an ARM processor. And that's the chip that is the brain of the Pi. Now, ARM processors are great. They get the job done. They're fairly fast. They're small. They're inexpensive. Mazel tov. But the issue is that DRM playback is not really allowed on ARM processors. The support just isn't there. It's something deep within the chip architecture that is as a result then within the firmware and the software that all of this playback is coming from. That just basically they collide and they both say, you can't pass, you can't get through here. 
you can't park your car here. And so the playback doesn't work. So when I read that, I thought, wow, I've been wasting my time. And I'd never read anything like that before. You know, a lot, there's so many, you know, single media player projects for the Raspberry Pi. I'd never even heard about the ARM processor. Not, I don't want to say issue, but just um, a char the characteristic of the ARM processor not working with these various technologies. And that's when it started to make sense that on Kodi, when they talk about Netflix playback or other s streaming service playback, they often talk about basically streaming from another piece of hardware to your Pi and playing it to the TV that way. Suddenly it made a lot of sense. But if there's anything you may have learned from watching my channel, I don't give up easily. So I had one more shot in the dark that I wanted to try, just to try, just to say, okay, I did this and now we know for sure. I found one more tutorial that involved installing Ubuntu Mate as the OS onto your Raspberry Pi and then following a few steps and that allegedly got Netflix and other DRM protected media to play on the Pi natively. So uh, I've actually found a really great resource for installing Ubuntu Mate onto your Raspberry Pi, which I think is a really awesome experience if you're into experimenting with operating systems on the Raspberry Pi, as I have recently. Um, it's fun to load different OSs. So if you want to play around with um, desktop Ubuntu on your Raspberry Pi, I'll link that down below so you can get the disk image and play around with that. It runs pretty well. I had no issues with that. So I get Ubuntu installed on there and I followed the various steps and I had a few things I was having me do. Um, first was to basically um, overclock the GPU, which resulted in a black screen at one point. So I did not overclock in the next version um, that I did. I actually did a clean install and just tried again. Um, and then it has you install Chromium, but only at I believe it's version 50, version 50 for all these browsers, so it's apparently a great level of the browser. So uh, you install that and you stop updates because uh, Chromium um, higher up is actually broken on Ubuntu Mate. So you basically install Chromium version 50 and there's a series of steps to follow. Um, I can tell you from experience that in fact, yes, the most current version of Chromium is broken on Ubuntu Mate. So don't try to take the easy way out and install just to get apt install. Uh, don't do that. Um, so you get Chromium 50 on there, and then there's a few other DRM settings that you play around with, and I had zero success. I tried it twice, clean installs both times, not counting the other time where I had the black screen issue, which is apparently quite common with this tutorial. No dice, not a dice, not one, not a zippo, nothing. Now, the person who made the tutorial, I have full faith in them that, yeah, it worked for them. And there's a few people down in the comments that said, yeah, this works for me. But I couldn't get to work. And honestly, at that point, like I said, I've been working on this for a week and a half, which isn't that long, but there's so many other things I'd rather be doing than trying to get Netflix to play on my Raspberry Pi. So, what I learned, you know, um, I'd said a couple videos back, I'm just gonna start with the Raspberry Pi. And I think trying to get things like Netflix and other things to play on your Pi, that's kind of like you're like getting your feet wet with the Pi and getting used to the command line if you've never used Linux before, which I hadn't. And as a result, I've, I now feel a lot more comfortable within Linux and I'm starting to get the hang of things um, and it's starting to feel a lot better that way. But I think going forward, it's time to start playing around some different projects on the Raspberry Pi rather than trying to do the Media Center emulator for now for now. As it stands with the support for the ARM processor and the various Linux distros on the Pi, it's just, it's not the Pi's strength right now. It just isn't. And I think basically you're trying to get the Pi to do something that's not meant to do. The Pi can do so many more things. If you still want to go media level, it's an amazing retro game emulator. Oh my god, you can play N64 games on that thing with the proper software. That's amazing if you think about how big the N64 is. 
and how little the Raspberry Pi is. And that's awesome. There's, I haven't even touched the GPIO capability yet. There's so many server things, VPN. If you ever need a VPN in the United States, right now is the time with the various things that Congress is pulling down in DC. There's so many things. And so for now, going forward, now that I've gotten my feet wet and I've scratched that itch to try to get Netflix to play on the Pi, I'm gonna go forward and do other projects. But that's all for this video. Um, I know that this is kind of like a, this is almost kind of like an FYI, just kind of like, hey, I tested this out, it didn't work. Um, and I think experimenting is really important, especially when you're just learning a new platform and everything like that. But I just wanted to kind of put it out there that there seems to be a lot of hype around using the Pi as a media player. And right now, I think when people think media player, they're thinking Netflix and they're thinking HBO Go and things like that. And it's just, that's not what it's meant to do right now. And I think that that's just kind of something to keep in mind for those that are new to the platform. But if you like the video, toss me a thumbs up. Toss me those thumbs down if you are so mad right now. Uh, leave me your questions and comments below. Have you attempted this on the pie? Have you had success? What I do wrong? Or do you agree? Uh, let's do other things with the pie. Let's move on from trying to play Netflix. It's more than a Netflix box. Let's be honest. Uh, find me on all social media nonsense. Links are down below. Thank you for watching. Consider subscribing uh, if you haven't already. Uh, and until next time, this has been Blitz City DIY.